Radiotherapy bunkers are heavily shielded enclosures that are designed to contain radiation from both direct beam and scattered sources, such as Linux or Cobalt 60 units. The bunker you see is one designed for use with a medical Linux. In general, bunkers will vary in design details, however, they all have some common key features, such as primary shielding, secondary shielding, and the maze. The maze allows ready access to the treatment area without the need, in most cases, for a heavily shielded door. The exception to this is when high energies, typically greater than 10 MeV, are used in the Linac design. In this model, you will notice the bunker is surrounded on all sides by areas of public access, consulting rooms, plant rooms, and a control room. The shielding design is optimized so that the work in these areas can take place unhindered. In some cases, the design's shielding performance will be partly based on occupancy levels, so that, for example, restricted access to the plant room may allow less shielding to be used. Access to the bunker is by the maze entrance. This sometimes has a physical barrier, such as an interlock gate, as shown here. However, other facilities may use a light curtain. The bunker has clear signage indicating the status of the source within. For this LINAC, the three possible states reported are no possibility of radiation, no radiation, but there is an immediate possibility of there being so, and a warning indicating that radiation is present. A last man out confirm button is usually mounted near the entrance. This is used to confirm that the last person in the bunker has left. The function of this button is sometimes provided by an interlock on the gate when it is closed. As we proceed into the bunker, the two dogleg design becomes apparent. Such a design often needs some enhanced shielding in the inner maze wall, which is viewable from the maze entrance, but has the advantage of a shorter maze with less scatter reach in the entrance. As we enter the main treatment area, we see the treatment couch in the centre of the room underneath the linac, which is mounted on the far wall. Yellow and red emergency stop buttons are visible on each wall and cameras are mounted high on the walls. Access to the engineering area behind the linac is gained through two doors. These should be interlocked with the beam and physically locked and the key removed when the facility is in clinical use. Here is an internal light status board, the design of which can vary considerably from bunker to bunker. As with the external warning, it gives a visible status report of the facility. In this design, the last man out button is situated near the maze. Pressing this initiates a timed exit sequence. Some facilities place the last man out button away from the exit to ensure a search is made at the furthest point from the exit. Wall-mounted cameras are used to monitor the facility when in use. In operation, they are used to ensure patient safety. They can also be useful for commissioning and testing the LINAC to check, for example, that the gantry position is as expected. On our way out, we notice a further emergency stop button on the maze wall. Here is a final look at the possible active sign status. Notice that this sign states do not enter when the beam is on, while the internal status sign states that the beam is on. The primary shielding, which is shown here in red, is designed to attenuate direct beam radiation. It is normally constructed of high-density poured concrete and is typically 2.5 metres thick. The secondary shielding, which is shown here in yellow, is thinner as it is required to attenuate radiation that has been scattered by the patient and the walls rather than direct beam radiation. A typical thickness might be 1.5 metres of high-density concrete. Primary and secondary shielding is required to protect areas above and below the facility in addition to the rooms adjacent to it. The full geometry can be appreciated when shown in three dimensions. The exact design is optimised so that work in areas around and above the facility can take place unhindered. In some cases, this will be partly based on occupancy levels.